It's the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome to another live Sunday edition of the Mike Prince Show here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Of course, it is our mission to bring you some news that you could use each and every day. Today would be no exception to the rule. We have a pretty interesting setup for you on this evening. We have head basketball coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View a and University Panthers scheduled to be on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. We also have the basketball analyst himself, none other than Coach Van Petaway. Hear from those two guys on tonight. We'll discuss the game that got suspended, the unique crowning of the volleyball champion in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And a whole lot more, I'm sure. Don't forget, you can join us Monday through Fridays right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. You can also listen to Miss Sonia Stamps, 9 a.m. on Fridays, and the infamous Carlos Brown on Saturdays from 10 12. With all that being said, we might as well jump right on in to tonight's episode. As we mentioned, prior to this week's matchups, it was a very light order as far as the football games were concerned. And in the midst of everything with the year that we've been having in athletics, the game between the Golden Lions and the Hornets of Alabama State was canceled due to the weather misbehaving. And I don't know if that game is going to even be attempted to be made up. Time will tell. But I wouldn't I wouldn't really put a lot of emphasis on that, especially with the way the schedule has been as far as COVID realignment and everything else. And speaking of COVID realignment, if you are the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, you have got to be down and out right about now due to the fact on how you were not able to go out and represent the university and potentially the conference in a head-to-head matchup with Jackson State. SWAC Volleyball Championship was to take place today, and due to COVID testing results, Pine Bluff had to forfeit to Jackson State. And I know that is not a good feeling. Pine Bluff had actually had an epic battle to advance to the championship round against Prairie View. It went five sets. It was a back-and-forth battle, and Pine Bluff went in the fifth set. And what was ironic about that is that the final regular season match between these two, Prairie View had the full sweep. Prairie View had come through and was looking pretty good. Like I said, it was a very uh, battle-tested and fought match. And unfortunately, the Golden Lions were not able to pursue forward. So I guess... A congratulations to Jackson State is in order. And with that being said, they will advance to represent the conference in the NCAA Volleyball Tournament. Now, of course, um, I have been receiving a ton of inquiries, phone calls, DMs, emails, text messages on our Friday episode in regards to the comparison from one's viewpoint and advantage of how we're in an abusive type relationship when it comes to how ESPN in particular is handling us in the addition to the Deion Sanders factor. And some of you, most of you, were in total agreement with what we had to say and how we had to say it. Some said I went to the extreme talking about comparing it to domestic violence. 
And it just goes to show that people have selective hearing. And we hear what we want to hear and we focus on what we want to focus on. And the comparison of that was to bring an awareness on both ends, to be quite honest with you. We typically think of domestic violence as a physical abuse situation, but it is so much more complex than that. It is much more detailed when you're talking about being in a domestic abusive relationship. And the key word is relationship. There's supposed to be a relationship between the Southwestern Athletic Conference, ESPN, and in the backside of that, Deion Sanders and Jackson State. And so when you take the time, I challenge you to go back and listen. A lot of you have. A lot of you have said my excellent commentary. And I thank you for that. And for those who don't quite get it, I understand that too. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. I got to take a break so we can get our first guest lined up on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline, and that's none other than Coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. You are listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network Sunday Night Live edition of the Mike Prince Show. And as always, we're going to take us a quick break, but I promise you we'll be right back. The Open Mic Broadcast Network would like to take this time to recognize its sponsors and underwriters. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, Prairie View Athletic Club, Temple of Refuge Ministries, Reflections Paint and Body Shop, Helping Hands Lawn Service, Diva Skin Conditioner, Purple Drip Daiquiri and Grill. For more information on how you can become an underwriter or a sponsor here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, our number to call is 832-213-8824. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas. How sports will trap. The Open Mic Broadcast Network serving student athletes from Little League high school, and collegiate coverage right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. From coast to coast, 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 from from dust till dawn. You can catch all student athletic action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice voice, voice, of student athletics. Hello, this is Alonzo Hardy Jr., the president of the SWAC Alumni Association. The SWAC Alumni Association is an organization founded on December 10, 1999 at the Sheraton Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Its mission is to serve as a rallying ground for individuals who have made the Southwestern Athletic Conference the illustrious conference that it is today. Its membership is open to former student athletes who played in the conference in any sport as well as to coaches, athletic administrators, staff members, game officials, and fans. Annually, the association holds a Legends Awards and Roast Banquet or Luncheon where it honors individuals with Lifetime Achievement Awards, a Chuck Profit Wagon Master Award, and occasionally a Distinguished Service Award. Proceeds from that event help to finance degree completion scholarships for student athletes who have exhausted their playing eligibility at SWAC universities, but who may still need an extra semester or two to complete their college studies. For more information on the SWAC Alumni Association or to get information on becoming a member, you can send correspondence to SWAC Alumni Association, 875 Miller Creek Lane, Newport News, Virginia, 23602. The email address is SWAC Alumni Association at yahoo.com. Never let anyone devalue or underestimate your hard work and dedication. Many times we hear people say, wow, you're lucky. I wish I was as lucky as you were. I've learned something about the word 
look. It's not necessarily one having luck, be it good or bad. It's about how a person applies the life lessons learned to their next assignment or challenge that lies ahead. We all are faced with challenges. We all have obstacles. We all have days that we wish we could have stayed in bed. The bottom line is, you take what's in front of you, work with what you've got until your change comes. The next time someone tries to tell you that you're walking around in this wealth of luck, it's okay to smile and accept it. But if you remember nothing else, remember this. Luck is spelled L-U-C-K, which stands for labor under correct knowledge. And when you labor under the correct knowledge, more than likely you will come out ahead of whatever situation is laid before you. This has been another moment with Mike. Thank you for tuning in. You guys be blessed. and We'll see you on the other side. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sunday Night Live edition of the Mike Prince Show. We're going to switch right over now to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. We're going to hear from the head basketball coach of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers, none other than Coach Byron Smith. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing well, Mike, yourself. Man, I'm doing great. Thank you for joining in with us. Um, I know the season didn't end quite the way uh, we were projecting it to end, but since you've had a chance to – digest and look at some ball or whatever what was it like for you as you go through the analysts of your season uh again great season i think you're right we touched on it. it didn't end the way we wanted it to but um a lot of kids fought hard and, and had a really you know not a special year um i mean i you ask any coach in the country they had a chance to go 15 and one the last 16 ball games i think all of them will probably take it um so Feel really good about what we were able to accomplish, but uh, you know, left left a little bit of meat on the bone, and uh, I was just still disappointed in that. But nonetheless, I thought it was a phenomenal season, and uh, proud of our kids. And uh, you know, I like the direction of the program is headed. Yes, sir. Now we know the hotbed topic right now. The portal has opened up, and you've had a couple of key players to enter into that portal. As a mm-hmm. coach, you can't really control the narrative of which way a person decides to go or come. But could you give us a little back scene situation of how does that even come to be? Does the player come to you and say, hey, I'm about to enter into the portal? And what are the actual steps and how this thing works out? I mean, I think it's just like with anything, you know, um, you know, Mike, when, you know, players, you know, have success and sometimes they feel like they've outgrown the situation. They think the grass is green on the other side. And I don't look at it as a negative thing. I think I look at it as a situation where players are, you know, kind of evolving and, uh, you know, they, they want to bet on themselves and see if they can do what they did, um, you know, at a particular institution uh, and maybe in a different environment. And if you're motivated by challenges, um, I'm, I'm excited for the kids to enter the transfer portal. But if it's for other reasons, um, you know, probably not as excited. If it's a you know, philosophical uh, uh, difference with the, with the player, staff, uh, institution, I mean, I think you sit down at the table and you try to work through it. Because I think continuity is important, but um, in this situation, as it relates to Prairie View, I can speak on that. Um, one situation is a young man is you know from a different part of the country, and family hasn't really been able to watch him play for two years, and he's got options. Um, you know that's Lonell Henry. I mean, you know we're we're all we're all family, right, Mike? We can, right. We can, we can name names. Lonell Henry, being from Chicago, mother hadn't watched him play because of uh, work schedule in two years, and, and he wants to get back somewhere closer to home. And he also is graduating, so he's a grad transfer. So he's uh, he, he's, he's accomplished the, the main goal uh, for all these students that they should be in getting a degree. So he's also looking at the option of maybe going to play professionally. He could, his college career could be over with, which I'm comfortable in, in both of the, uh, you know, both of the, the areas. If it's, if it's to get back closer to home so family can watch him play and support him, uh, and if it, or if it's to be able to go make a living. Uh, I'm excited about that. Um, Juwan Daniels is a situation a little bit different in that, you know, he didn't play at all last year because, he, you know, he just, you know, to be honest, just wasn't quite ready. You know, we had two all-conference guys, two of the most impactful players in my five and a half years at Prairie View and, and, and Gerard Andrews and, and uh, Devontae Patterson, and those three guys played the same position. So he just wasn't able to crack the lineup. And um, so obviously, you know, he redshirted and came back this year, locked and loaded, had a great year. And I think that Juwan probably felt that, 
he maybe was a little bit higher than Prairie View to begin with. But, the, you know, he didn't get recruited the way that he wanted to. Uh, and I think a lot of his interest is from the East Coast, which, in all fairness to Juwan, he's from Harlem, New York. And I think his situation is a lot like Linnell. would like to get back closer to home. Uh, I haven't closed the door uh, uh, 100% on Juwan that he won't possibly return. Um, but I want to I want to give him the opportunity to uh, look around a little bit, um, see what else is out there, see if, if another situation, another environment uh, will um, – you know, be good for him. I think he'll be hard pressed to find anyone that's interested in him that's won three straight conference championships, Mike. So I'll I give uh, people an opportunity to kind of nibble on that a little bit. Three straight conference championships. I don't know if anyone's recruiting him right now that can offer him that opportunity. So, uh, but I support these young men. I support the transfer portal. Uh, I hope that, you know, it will be beneficial and that it will um, accomplish for the young people what it set out to accomplish. And just giving them options. You all, we all want options in life, uh, Mike. You know, I drive by churches and Popeyes every night on my way home, and I got enough money in my pocket by the grace of God and by prayer of you that I can go to either one. If I want to go to Popeyes on Monday, hey, I can do it. If I want to go to churches on Tuesday, I can do it. I can switch it up a little bit. So I think that the bottom line is to have options. Uh, I think that's a blessing to be able to have options. These young men do, and I'm happy for them. Okay, and with, with all that being said, when I'm listening to you, do you believe in the case of Daniels, and we're not trying to put words in his mouth, that he came to Prairie View almost as a, a fallback plan, hoping to land somewhere else if he, as you say, bet on himself to have the success that he did have because he started uh, and had a great impact within the conference and to set the tone to those who would be interested, hey, this is what you get when you get in me, and so he's more or less taking a risk on himself? I, yeah, I, I won't say a risk. I think it's just like you say, you bet, you bet on yourself. I think it's a safe bet because I think he'll he'll end up somewhere because he's good enough. I think, you know, in the in the case of Jawan in particular, if people remember, you go back a year and a half, two years ago, uh, after Devontae Patterson had a very similar impact uh, for his first year, eighteen nineteen, at Prairie View, as did Jawan did this year in twenty twenty one. Devontae Patterson was thinking a lot like Jawan Daniels that hey, you know what? The grass may be green on the other side. So Devontae Patterson entered the NBA draft, if people remember that. And so he was gone after one year, you know. And I didn't necessarily support that, that he was – I didn't support that he was ready to do that. But I did support him if that what he felt was best for him and his family to do that. I, I want to always be supportive of our young men and their decisions. I'll give my, 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 my opinion uh, or share my experiences, but I always let them make that choice uh, as long as the choice is made with family. And for family. Um, so, J- Jawan Daniels was brought in uh, to replace uh, Devontae Patterson. And obviously, we were blessed to be able to get Devontae Patterson back, um, not knowing that at the time we recruited Jawan Daniels. So, it became a log jam at that position. And it happens all the time, Mike, in not only college basketball, but in high school basketball and AAU. I mean, sports in general, football, you know, you, you, have, so, you have too many guys at one position. Uh, and someone's going to be the odd person out. Uh, and in that situation, it, it happened to be Jawan. So uh, didn't really handle it uh, very well in the beginning, but I think he did over a period of time. And he just went home and came back and got himself ready to play. He had, had a chip on his shoulder. Felt like he had something to prove, wanted to prove to us that he should have been on the floor last year. And, um, you know, who knows, maybe he should have. Uh, but, hey, we, we, we were able to be successful with those two guys, uh, Patterson and Andrews, uh, as we were able to be successful with Jawan uh, this past season. We're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with head basketball coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers uh, talking about the case of the portal. And um, it's just part of the business in collegiate athletics these days. Uh, you, you have to continue to put pieces in and out. Things are dynamically moving at all times. And with that being said, it's you know not to be cliche or anything like that, it's the next man up mentality, and you have to always keep your head on a swivel when it comes to recruiting, just like you did mm-hmm. with this year. And and let me say this, and I'm not saying this because you're on the line with us, but I've said it before. I thought this was probably uh, one of your better years of coaching, especially when you were considered not to have much in the in the cupboard coming back for this third mm-hmm. season. And now it's another opportunity for you 
to prove that you have a system and not a one-hit wonder. I appreciate that, Mike, and I agree. You know, when you establish culture, uh, culture wins. You know, players aid. Um, you know, obviously I would never put myself in a position that, you know, these young men are having success because of Byron Smith because of the staff, because we all know players help coaches, you know, you know, have large homes and big cars and retirement homes and things like that. But I do believe in the culture. I do believe that culture trumps coaching and I think it, it trumps talent. And if you establish it, I think that you can, you can, you can move parts around. And my challenge might moving forward is because I, I, I didn't laugh, but I kind of smirked. You know, when people said that the cupboard was bare after Patterson and Andrews and those guys left, but I think that's a testament to our culture and to our staff. That Mike, if you think about it, in all fairness, and if we're being honest as men, we've been able to win three championships with kind of three different teams, three different makeups of teams. So I think that's culture. I think if you, if you look at it from that standpoint, and obviously we had some returners, uh, but 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 those two guys that we lost last year were considered the best two players in the conference. And when you lose, you know, obviously look at the Warriors. They lost uh, Steph and Clay last year, and I think they were in the lottery. They got they ended up being getting the number one and number two pick in the trap. So you know, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that players don't make a huge difference. They they do, but I think culture is something that's very important for everyone. I think if you look across the street <clears throat> at the University of Houston, they lost their best player statistically on paper. A kid by the, young man by the name of Caleb Mills transferred at the semester to Florida State, and they didn't miss a beat. And they're one game away from the Final Four, and I definitely think that. People need to pay attention to that, that Kevin Sampson has set the tone. He's established a culture. And, you know, the, the script is always the same, Mike. The characters change. Uh, and, and, I, and I think this is a, a testament to what we've been able to do as a staff is put established in a program, establish a great culture. Uh, and, and we want to continue to do that. And you're right, next man up. So uh, if someone feels that Prairie View is not the best situation for them, you know, we want them to handle it the right way in their exit uh, and do it in a, in, a, in a professional way, in a dignified and in a respectful way. Uh, but we're but we're going to definitely fill the hole, and 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 in my mind, it's, it's probably going to be someone uh, just as good, if not better. Well, I, I like the way you slid your alma mater in the University of Houston. I was going to get to that. <laughs> you know, I, I said, boy, I said, go ahead on, go Cougs. I'll give you that moment of shine. <laughs> go Cougs. We're talking, with, we're talking with Coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View a and University Panthers. And when you start moving ahead and looking forward now, Coach, um, as you as you mentioned, it's the next man up mentality uh, with the pieces that you have remaining. And we know it's hard to replace key players. And what I've appreciated about the program that you've established, although you've had some outstanding uh, additions to this program, there's not a mm -hmm. superstar all eyes on me type individual. It's a, a, a unit approach it's a it's a team concept and you don't just put all the eggs in one player's basket and if he's hot or cold so be the rest of the team and it's always been guys to step up to feel that bridge for this particular time of need for the program to keep its success with that is it harder or is it becoming harder for you to find a selfless individual to come and be a part of the type of program that you're trying to run very difficult, Mike. A great point you make. Excellent point. Very difficult uh, to find these, these types of kids just because of the farm system that we have with, with AAU. And, you know, everybody's a five-star. All you got to do is ask their mother uh, in AAU. Uh, and, and everybody's a star, you know, out there. And, and that's kind of how they're being molded. And and so it's not it's less on team. It's more on I, you know, I as an individual. And I think everybody, you know, everybody knows that, knows how, how the game goes. And, at, at that level. So it, it's difficult, very difficult to answer your question. And Mike, in large part, that's probably why we've kind of stayed away from trying to, to, to bring in those, those home run hitters. Uh, the, 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 the phenomenal five-star kid that a lot of these young people today are talking about, you know, the, the black lives matter movement and, you know, coming to an HBCU. Uh, you know, I, I had a young man uh, this past year, I was talking to him and recruiting him. He made that comment to me. He said, you know, I want to come there because I want to put Prairie on the map. And I said, excuse me. I said, excuse me. You know, so I mean, obviously, you know, you, you, uh, you, 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 you just look at it as a situation that, you know, this young man is not attentive enough to know that. I think you know, Prairie View um, has done some good things, you know, over the past few years, and um, 
I don't know that, you know, we're not on the map. You know what I mean? I feel that we are on somebody's maps anyway. You know what I mean? It, it may not be a, a, a United States map or world map, but it's a uh, it's a, a Southeast Texas map. So I know we're on some map, but when he made that comment, that statement, that kind of speaks volumes as to how they think, these young people, the home run hitters and the five stars. So, Mike, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know how we've established our culture. I don't know, I don't know how well some of these, uh, you know, superstars or future five-star kids, I don't know how well they would do it for you. Because, you know, one player can't define your 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 program, be it uh, in a positive way or a negative way. If, if, if somebody goes down, it's the next man up. Uh, if, if somebody's not there, you know, you, you, you have to be able to sustain and be able to maintain, you know, um, you know, that path of excellence and, 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 and success. So if you've got one player that can, uh, that you need to win and one player that you, that you don't have, you can't win, uh, then you've done a poor job in recruiting. So, you know, we'll continue. We won't, we won't ignore five star kids and say, Hey, he's seven feet tall. He can shoot dribbling pass and shoot threes and do all those types of things. Absolutely. We'll take him. We'll take him in front of you. Right. right. But, you know, it, it, it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult because uh, it's hard to coach those young people because they feel as if they're doing you a favor. If you, Mike, if you, if you beat out Texas a or Texas or Duke or North Carolina, and I'm not saying that we can do that, but if a kid, because of the Black Lives Matter, says, I want to come to an HBC, which a lot of them are, and, and I'm supportive of that, as long as they've got the right mindset. But, Mike, you got to be careful because if you take that kid and he comes to your program, he and his family feels like, that, that they are doing you a favor by coming there. So you can never coach that kid the way that he needs to be coached. And what it's going to do is it stretches me out as a coach because I don't know, I, I only know how to coach one way, okay? And that's with great enthusiasm, great energy, great effort, and great toughness. To have great preparation, to have a tremendous approach to the game, and to be able to go out and execute as a coach. And once your players go out and be able to execute on the floor as players. So that's the only way I know how to coach. So if I, if I have to alter my coaching style and we have to alter our culture to be able to bring in a kid that's going to be a five star that can have you on ESPN and 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 you know have you you know uh, you know on 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 Deion Sanders, Coach Prime's path, I don't know that we can do that. I don't know that I want to do that. You know, I enjoy the game too much. It's done too much. The game is is pure. Uh, the game is sacred to me, and not one person deserves to be able to, you know, for you to step out of what you're doing as a coach and as a program to be able to accommodate them and their family. I, I'm not, I don't feel really good about that, and I don't think I do well in that role. Well, sir, I couldn't have put it in any more better terms than what you just did, and uh, it's something that we're more than likely going to have to come back and revisit on as this things continue to unfold. Um, and, and with mm-hmm. that, I want to end on a, as I say, a, a little bit more fan-based note from Coach Byron Smith. Your Cougars have advanced, <laughs> and I know you're feeling good. And, and whatever the little uh, the little claw you all make down at U of H, I know you 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 over there, and you kind of, you got your purple and gold on, but I know you got that red and white on underneath it, real close. Um, how do you see um, your program advancing, and, and what do you think the true odds of them to be one of the last men standing? Well, you know, I, I tell people this all the time. I, I think you know, first of all. With all due respect, you know, to Kelvin Sampson, I think he's been the most significant hire in the history of athletics at, 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 at the University of Houston. And I know that they've got a you know, legendary, uh, you know, run with Coach Gavi Lewis. With, you know, I, I had a chance to know Coach Lewis and a uh, tremendous amount of respect for him. But I think Kelvin Sampson has been the most significant hire in the history of U of H athletics. And, and I do think that they've got a great chance uh, to, to, to be one of the Final Four. And I think that uh, once they get into that Final Four and that 10-10, I think they've got a great chance to be uh, on that final night uh, of uh, Monday night or Tuesday night. I'm not even sure when. It's usually Monday night. I'm not sure when it is this year. But I do think that they can be in the national championship game and I think with a chance to win the national championship. I didn't know that in, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago. Cause I know they had a little bit of turbulence and they kind of they kind of stumbled a little bit. Uh, but I think now that they, they've got their footing. And I, I definitely think that they, they are, uh, I'm not going to say a favorite, but uh, I, I definitely see them getting past Oregon State tomorrow night and then m- moving on to the Final Four with a chance to get uh, to the last game uh, uh, and have a chance to be a national champion. It's, it's a realistic possibility uh, from my standpoint. They've got a chance to do that. And I am Cougar proud. Uh, U of H made me, but Prairie View plays me. So uh, when it comes to rooting for people, I'm cheering for the Cougars, but uh, my heart's with the Prairie View fans. For sure. and, and that's where I'm trying to get our program to at least have a chance to be in the dance and, and, and to see what can happen. Uh, not saying we're the national champion, uh, but at least be uh, in the big dance 
uh, and maybe we can be an Oral Roberts. I mean, that's a, I think that's a realistic goal for us to try to shoot to be an Oral Roberts, to be a Sweet 16 team, uh, you know, with a chance to move to move on. Well, Coach, you know we're going to have to pick this conversation up later. I've always enjoy it, and I know you're a big Cougar supporter, a Cowboy fan, and. Uh, and I still oh, yeah. like you, though. I still like you. That's the, that's I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, you enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll talk as this tournament begins to unfold and get some more of your insights on things, okay? Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure, always. Man. All right. Coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers just laying it out there for the way it is in today's time. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have another one who kind of speaks the same background and sentiment coach van petaway you're listening to the sunday night live edition of the mike prince show right here at the open mic broadcast network i've got to take a break but i promise you we're going to come back and we're going to break this thing down even more with the i call him the guru the godfather of basketball none other than coach van Petaway. You listen to the Mike Prince Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network Sunday Night Live Edition. We'll be right back. Reflections Paint and Auto Body Shop, located in Waller, Texas, is ready to restore the beauty of your automobile. Whether it's a small dent or a major accident, if your vehicle needs auto body repair, check out Reflections Paint and Body Shop. All repairs are completed by highly skilled and trained professionals. They are located at 2910 Waller Street in Waller, Texas. And just in case you can't get it in to them, they provide towing services. Call them today, 936-931-5780. That number again, 936-931-5780. Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union has 13 different locations to better serve you. Locations in Rosenberg, Missouri City, Katy, College Station, Bryan, Brenham, and Waller, Texas. For more information, you can contact them on their toll-free number, 855-391-2149. Or you can send an email to information at bvscu. Org. Let's face it, from time to time, we'll have a need for an attorney, whether it's the case of a DUI, DWI, or any other circumstances that would find you on the other side of the law. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, located at 1047 Austin Street, is the one to call. Attorney Lee Van Richardson and his staff are equipped to help you get through your legal battles. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, 979-826-8008 in Hempstead, Texas. This broadcast has been made possible by the support of the Prairie View Athletic Club. The Prairie View Athletic Club is a proud supporter of Prairie View a and University Athletics. For more information on becoming a member of the Prairie View Athletic Club, send your email to pvathletic.club at gmail.com. That email address again is pv athletic.club at gmail.com Prairie View Athletic Club a proud supporter of Prairie View A&M University Athletics House Sports will travel The Open Mic Broadcast Network serving student athletes from Little League high school and collegiate coverage right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network from coast to coast coast, 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 from from dust till dark you can catch all student athletic action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of student athletics. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sunday Night Live edition of the Mike Prince Show. Coach Byron Smith in our first segment. And, man, as they used to say back home, he just told it like a T.I.E. is. You know, and 
Speaking of telling it like it, TIE is our next guest joining us on the Brass Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. Needs no introduction. He is a living legend, in the, in the, at least in my eyes. And I appreciate him so much. Anytime he can spend five minutes with me, I consider myself blessed. I'll present to some and introduce to others none other than the basketball analyst himself. And I affectionately call him the godfather of basketball, Coach Van Pettaway. How are you doing this evening, Coach? Hey, I'm doing fine, Dr. Prince, and, and, and thank you for being so gracious. Uh, and uh, I once again, I, I want to commend you on the work that you do uh, for all of us. Uh, I think you, you bring a great, clear, and defined message. You know, a lot of times we as people, <clears throat> we, we look at either the messenger or we look at what they're trying to portray instead of listening to the message. And I think that's very important. Well, thank you very much, sir. Um, and that truly means a lot for me to hear that coming from you because the respect that I have, the adoration that I have, and, and knowing um, that you're a man who, who doesn't hold back any punches. And I, I truly thank you for that. And as they would say, uh, uh, check your mailbox. The check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, sir. But with all that being said, I know this is like – Christmas in March for you with basketball being what it is. Normally you have been in the thick of the CIT tournament, but because of the situation that we're in, you have uh, NIT and NCAA basketball. And I know you just tickle pink with these games and these upsets you've been witnessing along the journey. Yes, you're absolutely correct. In fact, uh, you know, when it first started, I, I would have four, four different televisions going at the same time uh, because I didn't want to miss some of the action. You know, you're not hearing everything, but at least I get to get an opportunity to see uh, some of the action. And, and I was real proud this year of, of how the SWAC and the MEAC, uh, they both were able to come up with uh, wins on the same night. That's never been done before. Um, and, and I just think that overall for HBCUs, you know, we're getting better. We're getting better at some of the things that we're doing, but we still have a long ways to go. Because, uh, Dr. Prince, one of the things that I, I have a problem with is the thing that they call the portal. You know, in, in my hand right now, I've got 66 names, and all of them are from HBCUs. These are 66 people as of Friday who are in the portal. And, and for those that don't know that, that's, that's something that the NC2A created so a student athlete would have an opportunity to let other schools know that they are available. And, and I think, you know, it, sometimes it, 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 it will hurt some of our programs because when you look across the SWAC, Alabama A&M has three people in the portal. Alcorn State has four. Gremlin State has six people in the, in the portal. Jackson State has two individuals. Mississippi Valley has three. Prairie View A and M has two, and Texas Southern has three. That that's a though that's a lot of players from our league that are testing the waters. Now, in all cases, some of these kids may, might have an opportunity to come back, especially if they did things the right way. You know, because we as coaches, as long as you're doing handling your business and doing it in a business like fashion. We can sit down and talk to kids and perhaps let that kid know, okay, you tried it. That's not what you're looking for, but you got a home here. You can stay here. But in some cases, if they don't handle it the right way, I'm pr pretty sure that some of those coaches are saying, well, you know, we tried. We didn't deliver. It's time for you to move on. Well, you know but I, I hate to see some of our programs in this type of situation because a lot of these coaches this year was a very – this is the most difficult year to coach any type of team. And, and my hat's off to all of these coaches that survived the season because they had a lot to go through. And I'm just hurt as a, as a former coach to see this many players, and this, this list could grow now, this many players this soon that are looking elsewhere. A lot of times these kids look and think that the grass is greener on the other side. It's not always – that's not always the case. You know, I'm, I'm listening to you as you were calling off the number of players that have made themselves available through the portal. 
and it makes one ask, is there a hidden message that the public has yet to see surface that we might be missing why so many are entering the portal? Is it that difficult of a challenge? Is it that unpleasant being in an HBCU environment, in this case of basketball, that guys are trying to make a mad exodus to any place else? Well, look, well, this is the way I look at it. This is 66 from both leagues and, and, and including Tennessee State. That, so the MEAC and the SWAC. But when you look at the total picture, last year there were over over 500 kids in the portable and in, in the portal for basketball. I expect that number to increase this year. So we're saying that over 600 kids will put their name in the portal. All 600 of these kids are not going to find a home better than the one they left. Right. They're not because it, it's impossible. It's impossible. But but I, I think the thing is, this, this is what people don't want to say. I think this rule has allowed an escape avenue for some of these athletes. In other words, they don't want to be coached the right way. And, and and what they will hold over coach's head, well, I'll just leave. Because the NC2A has given them that avenue. This loophole should have been closed. Well, This loophole should have been closed, in my opinion. You, they should not do this. This should not be a blanket unless there's a specific reason for a kid to transfer. To me, playing time is not should not be in the equation. You get playing time by working. Oh, no but doubt. you don't have to work because you got the portal to fall back on. And and to, to, to respond to that for those who would be the quote unquote advocate for the student athlete that chooses to go into the portal, their argument would be, well, coaches can leave from one job to another for a bigger payday and they're they're not held to the same uh um demeanor or not demeanor but to the same standards that the the players are expected to be held to so why not allow the players to exercise their freedoms of choice okay and and dr prince this is what i would say to that that's not true on the hbcu level we as coaches are not leaving for another job most of the time the job that we have at our hbcu that's our job and that's the only one most of us going to ever have. So we're not looking to leave. Now, at those power five, where we're talking about million-dollar contracts, yeah, that that's true. They are moving for the almighty dollar because they got a better situation. They got more, more dollars coming into the program. They got more dollars for themselves. See, ba- basketball is, is a – this is a high-priced industry. You know, everybody can talk about amateurism all they want, but this is a business. You know, I, I, I read an article where the, the president, um, there was a president this past week that said that success of his team has already created a $120 million windfall for their school. All because his team, his basketball team, won two games Wow! in the playoffs. Now, with that kind of money coming into your university, it would seem that the easy answer would be that you should be willing to make an investment into that program so you do have an opportunity to reap those type of benefits. But we don't always see that. When I say we, I'm talking about HBCUs. We as administrators, we as some of the coaches, we don't always see that. Because the money that these basketball coaches are making by pay, playing these guarantee games, they're not, it's not being invested into the program. Some of that money should go back to the program so that you can put a better product on the floor. And, and that's the part that we're missing. Okay. We're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union hotline with the basketball analyst himself. I almost called you doctor, but you were the <laughs> Honorary doctor, Coach Van <laughs> um, and, and, and Coach, you, you, you hit on something about how these units, as they refer to them, bring a, a, a nice bit of change to the institutions and to, to the conference in some cases as well. 
And part of the challenge, and I've heard you, and we can play your sound bite throughout the network, where we need our students, well, not students, but people to come out and support not just basketball, but all college athletic right. events. And I have, um, from time to time, I have one of these out-the-box thinkings. And I thought that part of the challenge of getting people in attendance for these games and some, some great basketball matchups and um, some excellent coaching and player development and, and just player competition in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, to be uh, more precise. I say all that to say this. I think that sometimes we are looking at how other people operate and we try to operate in that same likeness. But A, we don't have the resource. B, that's not how we're made up. And then C, we just do things differently. We just right. do things differently, and there's nothing wrong with that. And when I'm going to say this, it's going to probably make some coaches cringe uh, right now. But I think part of the challenge of attendance, of attendance, and when we talk about attendance, I'm thinking community, student body more than anything. Yep. Okay. Right. When you start removing the coaches out of the classrooms, Okay, and I do understand the competitive edge that if they focus on coach, they don't have to worry about this. But in the cause and effect on the HBCU level, it, I think it was becoming more detrimental removing the coaches from the classroom for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons being you lose that personal contact with the rest of your student body, not just your yep. athletes and the athletes right. that, that make up that department or that university. But you could, even if it was, um, as they say, coercing them, hey, you want extra credit? Come to the game tonight and blah, blah, blah. Let me know you're there. We give you extra credit. Or come even sign my book at, at the uh, first quarter and at halftime, and then we give you credit, you know, for whatever the case may be. Because if you figure by halftime, if you got any type of team, they'll be hanging in there having a good time. They'll stay for the whole duration of the game. And when you when you have that a lot of these kids don't even know who the coaches are. When I say kids, I'm talking about the regular student body, not just student athletes. They don't even know who the coaches you, are. You're absolutely correct, Dr. Prince. You, you're absolutely correct. And, 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 and a lot of this should fall back on the head coach. Because w when I coached at Alabama a and I had my hand in every aspect of my program. Dr. Prince, when you picked up a schedule from Alabama a and for the game, every home game was geared towards something specific, whether it was a, a fraternity, sorority, a military night, or a teacher appreciation night. All of that stuff was done by me, not someone else. I picked the games. I designated what game we would have whatever event for that particular night. Now, the thing that I did to engage the students, number one, I always knew who my SGA president and who the queen was. I wanted them to be a part of the basketball program. I, as a coach, would participate in everything that those students uh, had. I wanted to be a part of SGA. I was a part of our homecoming committee at, at Alabama A&M. And one of the things that I did as a coach, every fall I am in the cafeterias the different cafeterias on the campus. So the students will know who I am. And the other thing that I wanted to do, I wanted from the students to let me know what they thought about my players. In other words, if you had a class with this kid, how was he doing in class? If you just encounter him on campus, how did he interact with you? Is he a gentleman and a scholar? Because that's what I expect my guys to be. You be a gentleman and a scholar. So, the, the coaches, you can't just stay in your office. I think you got to get out. You got to engage your student body. You got to engage the community. One of the one of our community pro, uh, projects, we did the read a book program in every elementary school in our city. My team and I would go out and we would read stories to the elementary school kids. Another thing that we did, I'm a very religious person now. I, I don't miss church unless I'm on the road. 
And and then I even found places on the road to attend service. I would go every Sunday to church. Some Sundays I invited my team. We would we would visit different churches in our community. And one of my players asked me to come. Why don't we always go to the church? I said, number one, God is the reason why you're on this campus in the first place. Because he had his hand on your life that led you to me. I said, and what we're doing, we're going we're gonna to serve with some of these same people that are paying these 15 and $20 to come see you play. We're going into their church to show them that we are total people. We, we, is, that religion is a part of what we do. We do believe in a higher authority. I said, if we engage these people, you'll see that those people come to your games. So from our student body, to the people, to the churches in our community, to our elementary and middle schools, where well, you, you had to be careful with the middle schools because then the NC2A came back and started saying that a prospect, uh, a kid was a prospect in the ninth grade. So that prevented you from really being there because that, you know, at the, on the big school level, they felt that was a recruiting advantage. But on our level, no. But we would go to the middle schools, we would do things, uh, their May Day programs, whatever they needed, their, the, the, the walks, and, and whenever they had a project, they can count on me and my team to be there. And I think the coaches have to get involved like that. Another way I engage our students, I helped my telecom produce my television show. I had a weekly uh, basketball show for, the, for over 20 years. The students got credit for coming in, working, being a part of that show. All of the students in the telecom department. I would use a student, I would pick a student every year to be my host. I'm giving that kid training. I've got four kids that hosted my shows that are now professionals in the field of telecommunications, and they got started with the Alabama a Basketball Review with Van Cutaway. So that's my way of giving back to my university. That's a way for my university to help promote my program. We were on Fox every morning, at every Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. That's all they, right. students, the students were a part of that. And I, I, and I just think that we as coaches, we got to think about more than just coaching the team. If you want to develop a total program, you got to get involved. Yes, there was there was nothing. I, I this I'm not bragging, but I was one of the only black college coaches to have a television show. I I the university allowed me to go out, get my own courtesy vehicles. I had two. These are these are things that our coaches miss out on because all they want to do is just coach the team. Some of them now, some of them are doing the right way, and and the the result is in the pudding. You see them, they're conference champions, back to back to back. Yes, because sir. they're building a total program and they're involved in every aspect of their program. You don't have to leave the students out. The students will come to the game if they see you. Yes, sir. The students will come to the game. My student athletes, when they see the head basketball coach coming to a volleyball game, going to a track meet, going to a softball game, a baseball game, they're going to say, hey, this is what family is all about, so we're going to support them. So they came out to our games. If you look back at the records, we either led the swack in attendance or I never fell lower than second in attendance at basketball games. And it's because we engaged the student body, we engaged our community. So and I was already, a part of that. Proof is already in the pudding. Right. Already in the pudding. We're, again, talking with Coach Van Petterway on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union hotline. And, um, Coach, I'm, I'm, I get just blown away every time you sit down and, and begin to drop these little nuggets. And, and here's where I look at, in the particular case of basketball, we have, um, of course, now soon to be 12 teams that will make up our beloved conference. And right. for the most part, for the most part, we kind of tread in the same areas looking for talent okay and i always thought that maybe you use you need to get off the grid just a little bit and i know it's going to be with the infrastructure of how your 
university is set up but instead of everybody going to this particular location how about if i go a state or two away from where everybody else is where i'm the only at least swag product that's in particular close and 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 can you can sell your brand that we could use your talent to help us make a difference in what we're dealing with back home is that a wishful thinking no that's doable that's doable. You, you, you're you going to have to do that anyway because a lot of times if the local kids, they don't want to stay at home. They've been at home all their lives. Right. It's tougher to recruit a local kid. They've been on a mama and daddy their entire life. They want to get away. Right. The average fan doesn't understand that. Oh, we got we got this, this player right here in our city. We didn't get him. We didn't get him because the kid wants to leave home. And that has nothing to do with your program uh, right. Success or failure. But correct. Correct. The, in some cases, that kid is ready to get away from home. He's trying to get out from under mom and daddy. Yes, and I've sir. seen that plenty of times, and I understand that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's almost to the point that if you, in your case, went to A&M and you lived in A&M, either you move and go to even Montgomery, for that matter, and you tell the kids about the A and M experience, it'll make them want to be a part of because it's away from them. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's and that's why when you look back at it, at our rosters, Tennessee, Georgia, uh Deep South, Alabama, Mobile, and Montgomery in that area, that's where our players came from. Every now and then you'll see a local kid on our roster. But okay. but but to get into to the bordering states of Florida Tennessee, Georgia, that's though and Mississippi. Those are the places where we can get those kids to come to Alabama A and M. And it wasn't that bad of a of a travel for their parents to see. And then the other thing that we need, we got to look at. We we got to get more more games on television and, and or publicized. You get the games publicized. You don't have to be on a particular network. Like when I got out of coaching, I started helping with the SWAC Digital Network. That was a great avenue. But then, for some reason, we got away from that. I, I, I thought that the, the key thing was to get publicity for these players and for these different schools. I thought that our SWAC Digital Network was a great um, vehicle for that to happen. And, and then we just put it on pause. We put it on pause. And then we went with ESPN, and we went to their network, to their uh, same thing, digital, digital platform. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if if we're getting all our games on the on two and and ESPN U, that's different. We, we're in more households, but if we're just going to go digital, I, I just think we need to look at helping ourselves by doing our own thing. Well, you won't have an argument out of me, sir. In fact, that was my Friday piece main concept, which um, I still stand by and will continue to stand by until the Lord himself calls me home and here, well done, our good and faithful servant. Because it is. And I thought you had, I heard it, and I thought you had a great message. You know, some people don't want to hear the message. I mean, they, they no, no, they, they may not have liked the delivery, but the message is what they need to be listening to. Well, son, I think the message is more important than the than the delivery. They say I took That's what they need to me, in my opinion. They say I took them to church, coach. And well, I you 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 to. okay? But you know, sometimes we we need to go to church. That's our problem now. We're not in the church enough. <laughs> well, whatever the case may be, the facts are the facts, and we offer people up the opportunity. They can join in and challenge question even agree to disagree with it but until you can prove and show me otherwise it is what it is coach there you go i have thoroughly enjoyed this and i know our listeners have we have come up to the top of the hour and i want to give you some closing thoughts and comments as we get ready to say good night and good evening to our listening audience. okay well, well but dr prince this is my closing comment i want you to continue doing what you're doing the message and the word that you're putting out needs to be heard. 
And I hope the people that listen to you will keep listening so that they can hear the truth. And God bless you and stay safe. Sir, God bless you. Thank you for joining in with us on the Brass Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. You know, you got an open door over here. We like the old hotel change or motel change. We keep the light on for you, Coach, and the door unlocked. You ain't even got to say anything. Anytime, Dr. Prince, anytime. All right, Coach Van Petaway, basketball analyst here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We want to thank both of our guests for joining us on tonight's episode, Coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers, and, of course, the basketball guru, the godfather himself, Coach Van Petaway. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thanks for our sponsors and underwriters for joining in with us. We must exit stage left for right now. Time is far spent. But until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.